Every year, this conference gives an award uh, called the Norman Nagel Award to a recipient. The first recipient was the now late Clement Preuss. Uh, in fact, he received that award in absentia because at the time he was in his last days suffering from cancer. The next year, we gave it to Dr. Ronald Feuerhahn, who has since passed away as well. In the third year, we gave it to Pastor Will Whedon, who I sure hope he's still alive and well because he's <laughs> going to lead the hymn sing after lunch. Although I, he seems what, somewhat peaked to me lately. And, and here in this fourth year, uh, we'd like to award it to a, a man who Jeff and I like to think of kind of our Moses, a man who has and is uh, leading us out of the wilderness of generic liberal Protestantism and American evangelicalism to the promised land of confessional Lutheranism. But I should warn the recipient here that Moses got to see the promised land. But like Clement and our dear Dr. Ronald Forhan, uh, also died before entering. He entered the greater promised land. And uh, so I hope that we're not portending anything of ill health <laughs> for this year's recipient of the, of the Norman Nagel Award. It goes this year to President Matthew Harrison. And thanks to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the producers and listeners of Issues Etc. present to the Reverend Matthew C. Harrison. Never figured out what the C stands for. Confessional, I think. <laughs> the fourth annual Norman Nagel Award for Pastor Harrison's unwavering testimony to Jesus Christ here in June 2016. The subscription is, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Matthew, you deserve it, and uh, thank you for all your service to the church. Please be seated. I went to Fort Wayne to study because my vicar played the guitar and I wanted to play the guitar. <laughs> I still would like to play the guitar. <laughs> and when I got there, I ran into people like Kurt Marquardt and Robert Preuss and Dean Wenthe and Bill Weinrich, and David Scare, and Richard Resch, and Francis Pieper, and Hermann Zasse, and suddenly I realized that uh, this glorious gift we have in the Lutheran faith is incomparable. And I discovered in my Greek New Testament, Lutheranism, all grace, all gift, 
only faith, sola gratia, Bible alone. And it grabbed my heart. And it became a fire in my gut that has not gone out. It only burns the brighter. Through every controversy, trial, and difficulty, it only burns the brighter. It is as though my fire is a coal fire in my gut that every controversy comes along and blows harder on that coal and makes it burn all the brighter. And I know, what you, I know you know what I'm talking about because virtually every one of you have had the same experience. The joy of the unfolding of the pure, clear gospel of Christ. The theology of the cross. The beautiful sacramentology of the New Testament. The, the beauty of the promise that as you go through trials, these are meant for a purpose, just like the cross of Jesus itself. Thank you so much, Todd, for what you've done. You've helped educate us all. I don't, I don't know. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've told somebody, well, are you familiar with issues, etc.? <laughs> There's nothing available. Are you familiar with issues, etc.? Why, no. Thank you for what you've done. It's been an amazing run, an amazing blessing. And know this, dear friends, this truth which has grabbed hold of our hearts for the substantive faith as it has been confessed for all times in Orthodox Christianity has grabbed not only you and me but millions and millions more like us around the world and millions more every day. God bless you. Thanks for who you are and what you do. Be joyful. Be faithful. Do not compromise. Faith, our Augsburg Confession defense says, fides quae non est firma non confessit. Faith which does not confess is not firm. God have mercy upon us poor sinners and grant us a firm confession. Thank you very much.